so uh, there's a lot of information behind this, uh, behind what we're what we're going to be doing over these next few days, and uh, th there's a lot of the science behind it, how it works, and all of that information is in our courses. These sessions are just the practical side of it, so it's going to be very minimum amount of um, me explaining stuff and more of us actually doing it. But having said that, if there are anything, any specific things you want to know, so you, if you have questions about the science behind it or how it works or anything like that, you're very welcome to ask those questions in the Q&A section and uh, I'll be answering those then. So just uh, to give you the agenda, for today, Monday, which is the first day of this uh, fitness program, is uh, we're going to start off by, I'm going to give you a very brief uh, introduction and overview. So as I say, all the details, you can ask any specific questions if you want, but I'm going to keep the explanation to a minimum. So it'll be a brief introduction overview on how what's happening inside your body and your brain. And then we will do the actual exercise. So I'll introduce you to the, the what we call the beginner's exercise. For those who are doing the superpower course, we have a little bit extra to, that we've added to this bit. So uh, you, you're going to get a little bit more than um, if, if you watch the inner circle uh, video the other day, you, you'll know what it is already. But uh, apart from that, we'll be adding a little bit extra that will help to boost it. And then I'll check in with everybody how you're doing, if you were able to, to do it or if you have any problems. So troubleshooting, you know, uh, if there's anything that you find you're not able to do, I'll help you doing that. And then I'm going to give you some, uh, a little assignment to do for the next 24 hours until tomorrow's session. And then we'll do Q&A. And so you, I'll, I'll answer your questions then. All right, so um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that we can, I can see everybody. Very good. So first of all, it's important to think of this, uh, what we're going to be doing here as a physical fitness program. So it's like a physical fitness program in that if you wanted to be able to get uh, stronger and fitter, you would need to do physical exercise, physical training of some sort. So you would perhaps you'd go running or you'd lift weights or whatever it is. And if you just sort of went for a run um, today and then didn't do it again, that wouldn't make you fit, of course. And Or if you did it today and then perhaps a little bit next week for a couple of days, that also wouldn't, your body wouldn't have time to, to uh, process and, uh, those changes and become stronger. In the same way with these exercises, the more you do them, the, the quicker it goes, the quicker you become strong and, and, and build your stamina, your emotional stamina, and the, and the faster and, and more powerful the results will be. So your brain and body will become conditioned to uh, feel good more of the time. Okay, so lowering stress, feeling good more of the time. So it's important to realize this is not just about when you do the exercise, you experience the results. It's like uh, becoming physically fit in that every time you do it, you're building and building on the previous uh, uh, exercises that you did. In addition to that, each day we'll be doing more, uh, we'll be adding on to what we did before. So tomorrow we'll build on whatever we've done today and so on up until Friday. The goal of this, so what we're aiming for, the end result is there is two things. Number one, that you are able to whatever's going on around you. And I know, especially at the moment with the, uh, with the effects of the coronavirus and the situation that everybody's going through right now, the challenges, that you will be able to put, change your uh, brain and body chemical state in other words, your emotional state from stress, whatever those negative emotions are, to feeling good quickly and uh, automatically. So that's the first step, uh, the first part of the goal. The second part of the goal is that you, you won't be triggered as much as you are now. So, you know, we're all human, so we still, we still have challenges, we still feel emotions, we still get triggered, but you'll be able to, it will be less dramatic, less frequent, and you'll, you'll be able to overcome those triggers much quicker and much more easily. 
All right, so does that make sense to everyone? Very good. All right. When I look down like this, by the way, I'm looking at all your faces. When I'm looking up, I'm looking at the cameras up there. So that's why I'm... Okay. So uh, the way, just a very brief overview, the way this works, um, when, whenever you're feeling a negative emotion, the stress chemicals in your system that create that negative emotion cause blood to drain from the prefrontal cortex of your brain where you do your cognitive thinking to the back of your brain for survival. So that means whenever you're feeling a negative emotion, you literally can't think straight. So one of the reasons for doing these exercises is not just to feel better, but to bring your cognitive thinking back online so that you're able to be more uh, creative, um, assess risk, your judgment, notice opportunities, and communicate more effectively, all of that um, is, you need that part of your brain. So stress chemicals that cause negative emotions like uh, adrenaline, cortisol, uh, those cause blood to drain from the prefrontal cortex. When you bring those stress chemicals down and you start producing feel-good chemicals like endorphins, uh, serotonin, oxytocin, that allows blood to return to your prefrontal cortex so you can think clearly again. So th that's the idea is that doing these exercises is, it's about lowering stress, feeling better, but it's also about being able to think more clearly. All right. So thoughts are connections between neurons and the neocortex of the brain, and those connections create matching chemicals. So to put it simply, negative thoughts, trigger stress chemicals, which drain blood from your prefrontal cortex. Positive thoughts create feel-good chemicals, which allow blood to return to your prefrontal cortex. So the, the idea behind what we're doing is, I mean, it, it's very simple in that. It's simple, but not easy. So it's very simple in that wherever you're putting your focus in the moment is determining the chemicals you're producing in your body, which determines how you feel and whether your uh, cognitive thinking is online or not. But the problem is that when you're feeling, when you're already triggered, when you're already feeling a negative feeling, it can be practically impossible to, to be able to focus on the good because we're designed to focus on the danger. So those stress chemicals are stronger than feel good chemicals. And that's why it can be easier to feel bad than to feel good. So the little exercise we're going to uh, introduce you to today and that we're going to practice together is designed to get your brain and body lowering stress chemicals and producing feel-good chemicals automatically. So you will, you will be doing it on purpose to begin with, but the more you practice this, the more your brain and body are getting conditioned to produce more feel-good chemicals, lower levels of stress chemicals. So is everybody, does anyone have any questions on any of that before we actually start the exercise? All right. So, and as we go through this, if you have questions, feel free to type them in the chat or just make a note of them. And then we'll, I'll be doing a Q and A afterwards. But after we've gone through the, um, through the exercise, I'm going to check in with you as well to make sure that everybody's been able to able to do it. And if you've got any, uh, any problems, we'll do some troubleshooting. All right, so let's get started. So to start uh, the exercise, we, you need a subject. And that subject can be, uh, it can be a person or a pet or an animal that's not your pet, but you just think they're cute like penguins. Or it can be uh, a place or an activity you love. So something you love, but without any negative uh, uh, emotions attached to it. So no um, you know, regret or missing or longing or guilt or anything like that. Just, just love and appreciation. So examples, uh, as I say, pets or other animals, um, your child when they were a baby, as long as you're not worried about them or anything now, um, or Hawaii or the beach or shoes or you know whatever you something you love or gardening you get the idea so before we move forward with this i'm going to just check in that everybody has uh, a subject so if you don't have a subject that you can use for this 
or you're not sure if the subject will, will work, will be uh, appropriate, uh, if you could lift your hand, uh, just wave at, wave at us and uh, I, I will help you find a subject. So Steve, if you can, I don't know how many pages of people there are, so if you can just check, I've just got one page on my screen, so. All right, so has everyone, and if you, you haven't got a subject and you don't have camera, you can type in the chat as well if you, if you need help. All right, so it looks like everyone's got a subject, so that's great. So take a deep breath and close your eyes. And I want you to start by thinking of your favorite color. And if you don't have a favorite, just pick one you like. And I want you to imagine now that you're surrounded by that beautiful color. And feel the feeling of that color as it surrounds you, that beautiful, beautiful color. Very good. And now I want you to think of your subject, that person, animal, place or activity that you love. And imagine holding that person, place, animal or activity that you love in your arms in a hug. Imagine hugging that subject and feel the connection that you have with it. So see, feel the love and the appreciation. And I want you to now notice where in your body you feel that love. Most of you will feel it in your chest or solar plexus. And notice that physical feeling. So notice how it feels physically. So it may be like a pressure or a tightness. It may be very faint, but that's okay. Just notice it right now. And now I want you to imagine that physical feeling in your chest or solar plexus as a ball of light or energy. And imagine it spreading down to your toes, up to the top of your head, and out to your fingertips. So that you're now full of that light, that energy, that love and appreciation. And now imagine that light or energy overflowing from you and filling the room you're in at the moment. Feel that expansion feeling as that light or energy expands from you and fills the room you're in. All right, you can open your eyes. Okay, so uh, hopefully you felt something there. If you didn't feel anything or it wasn't very strong, let, let me know. So now is the, that, that we, we just went through that once. That gives you a taste. What you just did there was you changed your brain chemistry, your brain and body chemistry from stress chemicals to feel good chemicals. So Nancy, let's unmute you. Yes. Yeah, Odile, um, I have a question because I had a very strong visual image, but a very faint kinesthetic to go oh. with it. Okay, so when you say it was a faint kinesthetic, um, what, what, what was that kinesthetic? What well, I'll be honest, I almost feel like I was making it up just to have a kinesthetic. Does that, I mean, that's fine, no, yes. I have a hard time accessing my feelings anyway. And that's so okay. So, and you're not alone. So that's a very, uh, very common um, challenge that, that, that a lot of people have. And so uh, Steve actually came up with this little uh, extra tip the other day for someone. So I want to, uh, I'm going to do it with you, but everybody else, if you weren't able to feel the feeling, the physical feeling of that exercise, follow along with this bit. Okay, so I'm going to lead you through it, Nancy, so I can get feedback from you as well uh, as to how it's working, so, so that will help. So, Nancy, I want you to take a, take a breath in, and as you take a slow breath in, I want you to feel how your chest expands. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Feel that feeling in your chest, and hold that breath, and now hold your chest in that position and let the breath out. Can you do that? Okay. Were you able to do that? Uh-huh. Very good. Okay. So that feeling 
when when you have your chest expanded and you leave it there while you while you uh, exhale, that however that feels with your chest expanded, that's the feeling you're aiming for. Oh, okay. Does that makes sense. And that's for everybody else as well. That's the feeling you're aiming for. So it's like a, it's like someone on the inside of your chest, pushing it, pushing it out slightly. And what that actually is when you do that. So you've just done it with breath. Now, when it, when you do it with the emotions, what that physical feeling is, is your heart physically expanding. So that is a, that's a physiological uh, state of your heart and it's the effect of oxytocin on your heart. Okay. And it's a, a very healthy state for your heart to be in because what's happening, uh, what's happening physically in your body as your oxytocin. So the oxytocin is produced whenever you think of someone you love and you imagine hugging them. And it also is produced when you physically hug someone as well, if you do it for, for a, a period of time. So as you're thinking of hugging the person, animal, place, or activity, your brain is producing, is triggering oxytocin to be produced. And as oxytocin goes through your bloodstream, through your blood vessels, it interacts with the, the little uh, tiles, the floppy tiles on the inside of the blood vessels, and it produces a chemical that causes the blood vessels to dilate which lowers blood pressure and obviously it allows more blood to the organs and all of that kind of thing. So it's a very healthy state to be in. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Very good. So, so for everybody else as well, just to clarify that again, what you're looking for is the same kind of feeling in your, in your chest as you feel when you take a deep breath, you hold it, you leave your, you keep your chest out, uh, expanded and you, release the breath so your chest stays in that so it's kind of like stretching your chest a little bit that's the feeling you're looking for it's the same feeling you'll get if you love something and you imagine holding them in your arms now it may take a little while so if you're used to like i was <laughs> living in a state of stress most of the time uh, your body's not used to producing to, to lowering the stress chemicals and producing those the, the feel-good chemicals so you, you may need to hold that, you know, feel, imagining holding someone in your arm or something in your arms uh, in a hug for longer periods of time in order for, your, for those stress chemicals to come down and the production of the feel-good chemicals to get to your heart and have that, have that effect. So it's like if you've never run before and then you want to run a marathon, you need to do a little jogging each day, you know, just sort of up and down and then round the block and so on. This is the same thing. So you'll do, so it's important not to force it either. So if you, it, it, for, for a lot of people, it can start to feel uncomfortable. And that was me. It was very uncomfortable to begin with. And I couldn't hold it for longer than a few seconds. And that again is just because I was used to living in a stress state. So if it's, if it's feeling uncomfortable, just relax, take a break from it, do something else and come back to it. So the idea of this is to practice this little exercise over and over again. And if you, uh, I will, uh, for, for those of you who've, who've signed up for this, I will email you a little MP3 audio guide that you can download onto your phone and you can listen to that, follow along wherever you are. And as you do this, as you practice it more and more, your brain and body will become more and more used to it. It'll get stronger, it'll get easier, it'll get faster. Although there will be some times when you can't do it, and that's the same with physical exercise, where you know it's it's not a straight line of you know it goes up and down, but overall it'll go up. Uh, you also don't have to close your eyes. So the closing the eyes is just in the beginning to to be able to get that feeling, but you'll eventually find you don't need to close your eyes anymore and you can do it as you go about your daily business. You can do it when you're having a conversation with someone else. You can do it while you're doing chores around the house, while you're walking, doing, doing all those kind of things. So hopefully that's uh, helped a bit more. So anybody else uh, have any troubleshooting, anything where you couldn't feel it or you're not sure of something or you need some help? Just wave your wave your hands or put in put in the chat. Everybody able to do it? Very good. All right, so let's do it again. Okay, so take a deep breath, close your eyes, and think of your favorite color, 
and imagine you're surrounded by that beautiful color. Feel the feeling of that gorgeous color surrounding you. And now think of your subject and imagine holding that person, animal, place or activity in your arms in a hug. And as you feel the love and activity, uh, the love and appreciation for this subject, think about the connection between you, what you love about them, all the things you love about this person, animal, place, or activity. And as you do that, move your awareness to your chest, to your heart. Move your awareness to your heart and feel your heart expanding. Feel that love shining out from it. And then allow that feeling to now fill your whole body. That beautiful feeling of love and appreciation, like a light or energy. And now allow it to expand from you, overflow from you and fill the room that you're in. And hold that for as long as you can. When you lose the feeling, open your eyes. Very good, you can open your eyes. All right, was everyone able to do that? Any issues or any problems or any doubts, anything like that, anything that, that didn't feel uh, as you'd hoped? All right, so it looks like everyone was able to do that, so that's great. Well done, everyone, because not everybody can always do it so quickly, so I'm very impressed. So let me just check in, Nancy, how was that for you this time? Were you, did you feel it more, did you feel the physical feeling this time? Yes, more of one. I can see how if I work on it, it's going to get better. Um, and that having, knowing about that expansion, that was very helpful, knowing what to aim at, what I'm looking for. Very good. Good job. That's great. And uh, that, that's good to hear. Yeah, we, we, we only came up, came up with that a few days ago <laughs> when somebody couldn't feel the, you know, I, I realized they weren't actually feeling the physical feeling. And I thought, oh yeah, we haven't, we haven't actually made a point of, of, um, of putting a spotlight on how important that physical feeling is. Well, so, it actually even felt like um, my heart was stretching. So it was almost uncomfortable a little bit and then it went away. So that is exactly it. And the, the discomfort, as I said, I, I used to, you know, when I first started doing this, I, it was really uncomfortable for me. Um, but I just, it, it, it was, I saw it as, you know, when you start look, start touching your toes <laughs> or doing any other kind of stretching that, that you're not used to. And then you feel that pull that's a little bit uncomfortable and you don't want to push so that it hurts. You want to just do a little bit, little bit, then give it a rest and then a little bit more. And that's what this is. It's exactly the same. So as that feeling feel, starts to feel uncomfortable, then give it a little break and come back and do a little bit more and it will become more and more comfortable. And I mean, I literally went from not being able to hold it for more than a few seconds because it was so foreign to me, it was so uncomfortable, to that's the state I live in most of the time now. So I don't, I can feel the expansion, but it's not uncomfortable anymore. All right, so very good. And so the, now we'll open up for questions. So, well, first of all, the assignment, the 24 hour assignment. So from now until tomorrow morning session, I want you to see how many times you can fit in practicing this exercise. As you can see, it takes very little time. And the wonderful news is that to change your chemical state from stress chemicals of negative emotions to feel good chemicals of positive emotions takes 60 to 90 seconds. That's all it takes. As long as you're not going back to the negative thoughts. Okay, so if you remember, negative thoughts trigger stress chemicals, positive thoughts trigger the feel good chemicals. You want to, if you keep your focus on this exercise for, the, you know, imagining holding someone in your arms in a hug for just a minute and a half without thinking about anything negative, you will have changed your chemical state. 
all right and again the more you do it the easier it gets the stronger it gets and the more powerful you'll start to see knock-on effects in the rest of your life as well so see how many times you can practice this before uh, between now and tomorrow and as you can see you can do it while you're doing other things and then tomorrow morning when we check back in when we when we start the session tomorrow morning I'll check in with everybody how you're doing, how it went for you overnight um, and, and for today, and we'll answer questions. And so by the end of this week, all of you will be able to, as long as you come to these things and practice, you, all of you will be able to do this quickly, easily, and you'll start to see big results in your life. All right, so now I am opening the floor to questions. Any questions? Oh, dear. oh, while while uh, people are formulating questions, I just wanted to add one little point, you know, it, it, and it's um, about doing this activity over and over. If you think about that, what you're actually doing is creating a new neural pathway in your brain. So you're creating a new neural pathway so that this feeling is now being associated with love, happiness, those, those feel good chemicals so that your body is getting used to, as your body is getting used to that feeling, you're making a, a uh, neural pathway, a link between that feeling um, and that activity. So that's, it's just a, another, <laughs> another little thing or another little way of looking at this to kind of help reinforce the fact that uh, don't just do this once a day and think that you're, the more you're building that neural pathway. If you think about uh, any other activity that you committed to kind of a, uh, a memorized activity, like learning the times tables, you know, how often do you memorize, you know, you, you spend time rehearsing re and practicing something to allow that neural pathway to become stronger. Thank you, Steve. Yes. And, and also like learning any skill, so learning an instrument, learning a language, learning to ride a bicycle, you, your brain and your body, your brain is creating new neural networks to support that activity. The more you do it, the more they, they become established so that it becomes natural, automatic. Very few of us who drive, uh, oh, I mean, those who drive will have noticed that you very seldom need to concentrate on the, the, me the mechanisms of driving because it's so automatic now. And that's the same with this. So thank you, Steve. That's, that's a very good point to bring up. All right. And so any other questions? Everybody feel comfortable with it? Tammy? Yes. Hi, Odile. Hi. Lovely to have you here. <laughs> so would you say it's better to practice it more often for 60 seconds or to try for longer? Because... If it doesn't change until 60 to 90 seconds where you're getting the feel good, then is it more important to try for 10 minutes or to do it more often? Very good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, yes, so the way to do it is do it until you feel that feeling. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it shouldn't, shouldn't take too long to get that feeling even if it's very faint, and then hold the feeling for as long as you can, as when you lose the feeling, stop, and then start again. So for example, I'll uh, take a deep breath, close my eyes, I'll imagine being surrounded by my color, and then I'll imagine holding um, you know, a kitten or whatever in my arms in a hug, and I'll feel that feeling. Now, if I can't feel that feeling, then I'll stop, and then I'll start again with the color. And then imagine the little kitten. And if I can't feel the feeling, I may think about why I love the kitten. What's so lovely? Ah, oh, the soft fur and the way it purrs and its cute little face and its nose. You know, get, the more you get into the details of your subject, the more those, strength, those um, feel good chemicals will start pumping into your system. And then once I've got that feeling in my chest, I'll do the, you know, it's imagining it all the way through my body and, uh, now, as soon as I lose that feeling, I'll stop. And then I'll start again from the color and the thing. So, so that it's like when you're, when you're, um, when you're riding a bicycle, it, when you fall off, then, then stop, take a moment, get back on the bicycle. All right. So you wouldn't keep pedaling while you're lying on the ground. <laughs> 
you get up and get back on the bicycle. <laughs> so that's the way to think of it. It's just, and it's also like tuning into a radio station, getting that, that feeling. So as soon as you lose the feeling, it's like you've just gone past the, uh, past the dial and then you come back. For, for those of us who still remember analog anyway, then you, die, you do the dialing back, back to the actual, uh, to, 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 to tune into that station. Does that answer your question, Tammy? Very good. Yes. Uh, great. Thank you for asking it. That was such a good one for, for everybody. And any other questions? Uh, Odile, I think there's one in the chat for you. Oh. Uh, I uh, which one? Oh, there's a couple. So, uh, is it better to feel from heart center because the first time it was very strong in solar plexus and less strong feeling in heart center? But this is a very powerful pro process, though. Very good. Thank you for that question. Um, yes, you can do it if you if you feel it in your solar plexus. Then start with that and allow it to rise to to spread up to your heart. So you can do it. You, you, uh, uh, you say, most people, it'll be the heart, but for some people, it is solar plexus are stronger, and that's okay. And just allow it to spread from from your solar plexus, if that's the case, as, as long as it is still that feeling of love and appreciation. Because with the solar plexus, sometimes we also feel negative emotions there. What we do with the heart as well, but solar plexus particularly. So you want to make sure that that is, that it is love and appreciation rather than a negative feeling. Um, someone else says, "I feel as if when my expansion of the chest is finished, and I've let the air out, it is as if my muscles are holding the chest out." Uh, is that okay? Yes. So that's the so when you uh, the expansion of the chest is finished, and then you've let your air out and you're holding your muscles, so the muscles are stretched, uh, that's okay, but that is, uh, remember that that is just a reference for what you're looking for when you do the love exercise. So the, the breath thing is not the exercise. So inhaling and keeping your chest out, that's just to go, okay, so that's the feeling I'm, I'm aiming for. And then when you imagine hugging your subject, focus on your chest and see if you get that same feeling. That's the, then you know that you've got that, you're tuned in. So hopefully that answers your question, but if not, just clarify it for us in the, in the chat again, and, and we'll answer that. Um, uh, Tammy says, I have the huge relaxation and meditation feeling on the breath out too. It's like heavenly. Yes. Very good. And again, you know, this, this process, in the beginning varies quite quite a lot for different people and it'll depend on you know what you've got going on in your life already the 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 chemical state of your brain and body when you first start and th there's a lot more to it but as you keep practicing as you practice this more and more it becomes the same for everyone and here's the thing this this feeling of expansion in the heart with the feel good chemicals in your system, that is our natural state. That's who we really are. And everything else is just, you know, covering up that light of who we really are. So the more you practice this, the more authentic you become to your, to your real self. And the more, the, the, the safer you'll feel, the calmer you'll feel, the more confident you'll feel it's, you know, this is, this is, that's why I call it a superpower because it is basically, that's pretty much what it is. And you'll notice the knock on effects in the rest of your life as you practice this. So any other questions? So uh, if, if you have any other questions that come up before tomorrow, just uh, pop them in the, um, in our, uh, Facebook group, the Remit Method Facebook group. Just ask your questions there. Um, Steve and I are very active. We love answering questions, so we will answer them as you as you go. So don't uh, don't leave and you know if something's not working for you, or you have a question, or you have any doubts or anything. Don't you don't need to wait until the session tomorrow. Don't let it go. Just you know ask in the Facebook group if you need to. Um, and Karen. Yeah. Says, yeah, will we use the same link or yes? So the same link, the same Zoom link, 
as, as you use today, you don't have to register for every day, just use the same Zoom link, okay? And um, uh, the other thing, is, yes, so if you think of it as a room, we'll be in the same room tomorrow. Okay, uh, if you think of a physical room. And again, we'll open it up early so you can chat and connect with each other uh, beforehand. All right, so if there's no other questions, I'll, uh, I'll allow you to go, go forth into today and practice, uh, practice your new skill and um, do it as much as you can. The more you do it, the easier but bearing in mind sometimes it may not feel like you know it may feel like you've gone backwards but that's the same so I do want to share this quickly actually when I started doing running a running training program I remember they said uh, some days you'll skip like a gazelle and some days your legs will feel like they're made of lead and there is no rhyme or reason for it that's just part of the process just keep putting one foot in front of the other and and you'll build so that's what this is some days some days you'll find it's easy or sometimes you'll find it easy to do and sometimes it'll feel like you can't feel it at all that's okay just take a break and then come back to it it's just part of the process of conditioning your brain and body so while you're doing this your brain and body physiologically are making core changes so that's why sometimes it can feel easier and sometimes not so easy and you know it takes time to uh, process those changes. Um, thank you, Tammy. That's love. Tammy says really phenomenal info. Right, always a pleasure to be with her, Jill and Steve. It's a pleasure to be with you as well, Tammy. Thank you, and uh, thank you all. And see you tomorrow. Lots of uh, love. To you. Oh, Steve. Um, I just wanted to say that um, we're also going to be putting these recordings up and getting them onto YouTube so that you can also review the recordings. So as quickly, you know, as quick as I can get these things processed, I'll get a, a playlist up on our YouTube channel. So you'll have access to uh, rewatching the videos as well. That's and it. Yes. inviting other people to, uh, to view the, the videos as well. Yes. So hopefully that, that works for everyone. All right, everybody, lots of love to all of you and lovely to see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.